Well, hi everyone who uh, who just joined us, who has been here for a few minutes. Uh, welcome to a very special edition of How Do You Fix Your Coffee. Um, these sessions kind of started uh, a few weeks ago as a let's just you know get together and chat about like the normal and mundane things you know while we're at home. It started out as a I want to know how do you fix your coffee when you're at home. And personally, I have iced coffee no matter the season. Each week, uh, we have different topics under the umbrella of how do you fix your coffee. Uh, and today, I'm really excited to introduce a very special guest, Sister Kathleen Feely, who's President Emerita and SSND, uh, who's going to be talking with us and engaging us in discussion uh, about her topic, which is the nugget of gold in the straw. My name is Eliza Ross. For those of you who just joined, I'm going to turn it over to Sister Kathleen Feely um, to, to kick us off this morning. Thanks for joining us today, Sister. I'm delighted to be here. I think this is kind of fun, and I'm loving seeing the pictures of all these beautiful women who are our graduates up there. <clears throat> I picked the topic, where is the nugget of gold in the sea of dross, or sea of straw? <clears throat> By that I meant, this is a very difficult time for everybody, but where are the good things happening? We always can see some good in what goes on in our lives, even though it seems very strange to look for good in the pandemic we're now in. So um, I've been kind of looking for good. Um, I got a delightful surprise on Easter Sunday when I tuned in to Andrea Bocelli singing mm. a beautiful, unbelievably beautiful music for hope in a cathedral in Milan, empty except for the organist. And I really recommend that everybody try to get that on YouTube. It's very easily found, <clears throat> Andrew Percelli Easter Sunday concert. He really lifted my heart, especially when he walked out of the cathedral to the empty street in front of him and sang Amazing Grace. It, it was kind of my Easter celebration, although I had celebrated over the, over the TV, not the TV, the um, computer a couple of times. But that was like a, a strike of gold in my mind, and I'll never forget it. It just said, God is here, all is well, Mary is washing over us. It said everything I, that I needed said on that day. So if you saw it, I'm sure you'd like to agree with me. If you didn't see it, check YouTube and you'll find it. Perfect. Somebody else see some glimpses of a light they haven't seen before in the midst of this darkness? If it helps you all to, um, to figure out who's going to chat first, feel free to use the emoticons at the bottom of the screen. There are two reactions that you have available. One is like a hand clap, which could also act as a wave. Um, another is a, a thumbs up, which we would take to mean as an endorsement. Um, so if you um, want to, you know, mention something, just just go right ahead and hit that uh, hand clap button. Oh, go ahead. I see Kay oh, one one of the things I've been doing is church hopping. So since the masses are online and I've always wanted to see the different churches in Maryland, now I can do that. So um, I've been looking at the different uh, churches and how they look. And so that was uh, on my bucket list to visit many more churches in, in uh, Maryland. So now I can do it easily. <laughs> it's been bringing me joy and just to see how other parishes um, do their services and, you know, trying to and, and seeing what um, messages are delivered so it's that's been spiritually fun <laughs> oh I love that I love that phrase church hopping church hopping <laughs> during the coronavirus and I've done the same thing I've been with the Pope and I've been with in beautiful Canadian mass and say and St. Bernadine here in the city is just wonderful so I do exactly the same thing and it is nice Go ahead, John. Hey there. Um, I, oh, and I'll unclap there. At least try to. Um, 
No, just one thing. Uh, so um, I, I'm a graduate of the, uh, the nonprofit management program and uh, kind of a nonprofit guy at heart and in the um, healthcare sector and uh, small benefit, whatever you want to call it, is, um, you know, a lot of us who are in kind of connected to the social services universe or the healthcare universe uh, know kind of how fragile um, our system is. And, you know, I hate to say there's a lot of folks that we interact with who really don't get it. And um, unfortunately for some of the wrong reasons, but maybe for some of the right reasons, some of the conversations that are uh, going on about how, you know, of course, necessary, you know, some of the services that are out there. I mean, frankly, a lot of people got their eyes opened and it's really, I hate to say fun, and fun. Well, I don't know if fun's the right word. It's good to see some people who are peeling another layer or two of the onion away. They're seeing uh, the world uh, for maybe uh, some of its fragility. Um, hopefully they're not personally getting, um, you know, losing their jobs and, and seeing how, you know, thin that social safety net is, but uh, it's starting conversations born out of necessity um, that are, you know, have really been a long time coming. So uh, I know some folks who politically or just, you know, in their, their world have uh, a certain worldview and are seeing some changes based on uh, having some things revealed to them that they didn't know about previously. So I've got some hope, a little bit of hope for, uh, for a few improvements in the world to come. I'm reading these little chats over here, and I noticed that Jennifer has been in this cathedral that I just spoke of in Malaya. Who, who is Jennifer? Let me see your picture, Jennifer. Jennifer, do you want to take yourself off mute? Oh, there you go. Okay. Yes, ma'am. It's good morning, everybody. It's very nice to see everybody's face. Yeah, my husband is active duty um, Navy, so we actually just moved back to the area. We live in Springfield, Virginia now. We lived in Germany for three years and moved back in January. Um, and it was a wonderful opportunity. Although I, I didn't want to be a, a downer here, but I almost had the opposite reaction sister only because I have been there twice and the amount of people that are generally standing out in front of that cathedral is massive so my reaction to that was really really bittersweet because it was absolutely beautiful and I'm so glad that everyone else got to um, enjoy that and and see that beautiful place it's actually pink the stone is like a pink marble that they use to make it so it's very light pink if you see it. it's just one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life um, but n seeing nobody there was just the strangest, most thing, I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it is gorgeous, and I'm so glad that everyone was able to see that because it's, it's really a beautiful place. And if you ever have the opportunity to visit, Milan is a, is a beautiful city, and that cathedral is gorgeous. Yeah, go ahead. I see your hands. I, I don't know how to raise my hand virtually. That's okay. You got it. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, and this is very unexpected, because I didn't understand what this was or anything. I just read that Sister Kathleen Feely was going to be on this morning. And I think my golden nugget is seeing this community. It's wonderful to see Sister Kathleen Feely. Also, Sister Marie Jerome, because my community <laughs> like is also the high school. And um, so I just really appreciate having this community and knowing you all are out there. That's well, tell it. Us something. <laughs> and tell us something about you. I remember you in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I've gotten better. <laughs> gotten better? <laughs> <laughs> um, what to say? I'm an English major, as you might have expected. I got my PhD in British Lit, did my dissertation on Yates. I have three children, grown children, who are all kind of in the area, but of course we're not together now. Um, 
and I'm retired. I'm living in a retirement community and really enjoying life. Really enjoyed travel. So now I'm enjoying the virtual travel, like hearing about the Milan Cathedral. Good. That's it. <laughs> Karen, did I see your hand raised? Oh, I actually hit the wrong one. I was oh. <laughs> again, but um, I um, I teach school and I teach ESOL students. Thanks to Notre Dame, I went back to school at mm -hmm. fifty-eight. Yes, it can be done. Um, and it's interesting. The children, you would think, uh, I, I teach in an impoverished area. They all want to go back to school, and I'm not able to reach all of them because they don't have technology or internet. So I've been calling them but every one of them miss school, they miss their teachers, they miss their friends, and every day when I chat with them, they're so happy. And the parents, most of the parents do not speak English, and they are just so thrilled that the teachers are providing um, education for them and providing comfort for them. But, you know, as little as kindergarten, they're, they're very fearful, they're very afraid, but they, um, are pos they're positive so I have like all these cute little things around me and we, we, we talk and it's, it reminds me of when I taught in the 80s without technology so I'm doing the all the old school you know holding up papers and posters but as, as little as they are they are very afraid and they're very hopeful that we can go back to regular school. Anyone else who's who's found that that bit of, of gold in um in what you've heard lately or experienced? <laughs> well, I had another one I'd like to talk about because it's so um normal in one way. <clears throat> Yesterday, I think it rained almost all day, and as soon as it stopped about four o'clock in the afternoon. I, but maybe it was the day before, I'm not sure. Anyway, I went out to walk. So I was walking around in the area around my home and I saw a very delightful sight. It was two parents, so the mother and the father, and two little girls. The little girl was about three years old and she had red boots, so a tiny red boots. And she was jumping in every pothole on the road, just jumping in and laughing and jumping in again. And her parents were just watching her. And then her older sister, who looked like she might have been six or seven, had a, a tree branch. <clears throat> and she was whipping up the waters in the other, uh, other pool, up little pools as they went along, just making the waters move. And the parents were walking behind them. And I just said to myself, would I see this at four o'clock in the afternoon on an ordinary work day? No, mm. I would not. Just the time that some parents are really giving their children, trying to um, trying to make it fun for them. This is this time that we're living through. It just made me realize that it's bringing a lot of good out of families. I think we're all concerned for each other, especially for children that they don't get depressed or downhearted. So I had that scene in my mind as I was walking along after they left. I just said to myself. This is another little piece of gold I see in all this straw. It's a family who are more conscious of each other and their needs. Go ahead, Chrissy. So, like Sister Kathleen said, I sometimes see Sister Kathleen when I'm running. She's on her walk. We have the same schedule. So I'm running by and she oh. and you're walking. Yeah, we're on the same schedule because I run around the campus. And I find that when I usually run, first, it's never in the middle of the day because I'm at work. So it's usually only on Saturday and Sunday and no one's around. And I usually don't talk to anybody. I just run and I don't look right or left. I just keep my eyes straight ahead and maybe I wave at the security people. But now I'm like waving at everybody. I'm like, hi, and people wave back. Like they want to interact with you. So it, 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 I do think that it's going to change. You know, I see families and I say to my friends, you know, some of my friends are not working right now and they feel, you know, sort of helpless. But the one glimmer of hope they can sort of see 
is that they get this time with their kids. So, you know, you have to find this happy place because you're not going to get that time back. You know, you're not going to, I'm not going to be able to go running at three o'clock every day, mm -hmm. hopefully mm -hmm. ever again, you know, I'll be at work. So I, I find too, and the, you know, it's, it, it kind of is very uplifting to say hi to strangers. Um, so that's kind of what I'm seeing like every day. And I, I, I do observe the families and they're playing and on windy days, they have kites out on the fields and it's really nice. It's really nice to see. We've got some really good uh, things happening in the, in the chat right now. And I was just wondering if, um, if Jindan, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Please let me know if you're, as someone with another hard to pronounce name, I understand your plight. Um, would you would you like to share a little bit about about what you're doing now and um, and how and how you're being affected by all this? Um, yeah, it's Chinna Deal. You did pretty good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so since I'm I'm considered essential, I'm, I'm part of the staff here, and I work in a diagnostic unit. So the girls actually live on this unit. It's like an actually secured unit, so they can't even leave. Um, so I'm still teaching. I'm waiting for my class to come in. They're running late, and it's kind of we're kind of on a flex schedule. It's not a regular, the regular school day, um, because it's just not a regular day. <laughs> it's not, our days really aren't regular anymore. We try to normalize it as much as possible for the girls here, so they still have class, um, just like because you know, we run on Baltimore County um, curriculum. There's their their schedule, so since they're doing the um, e-learning, I try to still keep them learning at the same rate. Um, because um, it's a three-month program. Some of the girls, of course, are here longer than three months. My job is to make sure I keep them up on their schoolwork. So when they transfer into the regular school system again or wherever the program they're going to be entered into, um, they're not so far behind in their work. So I teach the four core subjects every day. So a range of teenage girls from the ages of 12 to 19. So, I mean, I'm, I love coming to work. I love my kids, but I would much rather be home with my own kids. <laughs> But my husband, he's at home. Um, the girls love it because they don't see dad a lot because he works in D.C. So of course, the commute from Baltimore to D.C. They don't get a lot of time with them. So this has been great for him and the girls. Yeah. I rush home every day so I can join in and be a part of the family fun. <laughs> right. Wow. Jim, how, how many children are in the group home? Um, for, my, for the diagnostic unit that I work in, we have 15 girls right now. Then there's the group home, there's a group home part where there's girls who actually live on campus where they're able to go outside for school. And there's about seven or eight girls in that unit. Then there's a boys unit. And there's about 10, 12 guys over there right now. Wow, that's a lot. Wow. Yeah. And are they all safe so far? Nobody has Yes, anything. nobody has anything. Every they finally did some PPE stuff that I requested for the campus. I was yeah. like, we gotta keep the staff safe and the kids safe. So we had to implement some things, but everyone's good right now. So that's good. I'm so glad. Bless yeah. it. That's a wonderful work. <laughs> Thank we've, you. We've got mm -hmm. a question in, in in the chat for you actually. Um wondering kind of how oh, okay. are your students dealing with uh quarantine. I'm wondering also how are they keeping their spirits up and how are you know, how's that relationship between you and your students? Well, um the biggest thing for them is that they can't give me hugs right now. <laughs> So they're like, I just want to hug you. Um, so that's the biggest change for them. They need that personal touch because a lot of them, um, sad to say, their backgrounds, they didn't come from a great background. We have a lot of sex trafficking ladies. Um, so they've been out of school for four or five months. They haven't had that one-to-one -one motherly touch. Um, so it's, it's, it's hard for them. Um, but other than that, we keep up with our activities. We have our evening activities, we have activities here in the classroom. So they see that we're still engaging with them. It's just that it's just a little, it's just tweaked a little bit. And so most of the time they're able, you know, they still have fun with them and they're, they're still fine. But that's the biggest thing. They, sometimes they want that hug and get good. Right now, so. Wow. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So I Is try every day. <laughs> Every day, right? Every day is a, it's a new day, day. and um, yeah. you know there there are nuggets that you find, you know, out and around. I've I've been enjoying the the jokes that have been have been going around lately, and yeah, <laughs> you know, finding finding a little humor there. Right. 
Anne, did you wanna uh, did you wanna raise your hand or are you cla just clapping? I was just clapping. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. Really yeah. wonderful. Anyone else have any uh, nuggets or perhaps any any tips, tricks uh, for ways that you're you're kind of keeping your spirit up uh, during this time? Maybe I could share. Um, so I, I have a toddler. I don't know if she's a toddler anymore. She's more than three. So she's less of a toddler now, more of just a little kid. Um, and what you all were saying about like seeing the other, the families out and about and playing in the rain, totally true for her. We've, we've been very strict about going outside twice a day, whether it's raining or sunny, it doesn't matter. Everybody's happier if we do. And yeah, she can just wander and play and be in the moment. And, and if I just stick with her in the moment, then things are, you know, they feel okay. Um, but, but she still feels some, you know, she feels a little bit of what's going on in the world. And um, we have a schedule on the refrigerator and we go check it and we move the magnet down. You know, did we eat breakfast? Did we change clothes? Did we drink a full thing of water? Uh, and I have to say, I think it's good for all of us to have like a routine, right? Because there are days where I want to just like wallow, not do anything, put her in front of a movie and just not not function very well but um a we have to keep going because three-year-olds don't stop and if i do let her lay in front of a movie all day i'll pay for it at bedtime <laughs> but b i think it's good for us too so um my tip would be break your day up into manageable chunks right very small achievable things like her schedule are things she good. Would do anyway <laughs> But somehow it's reassuring to her to like go down that list throughout the day. Like, oh, we haven't had lunch yet or we're having lunch now. Let's move the thing down. It makes you feel like you've, you know, accomplished something. It gives you some structure and productivity to your day. So I would say even if you don't have a child, <laughs> make mm -hmm. yourself a little schedule. <laughs> Check things off on the schedule. And, uh, and I, I don't know, I think it keeps us, keeps us going, makes us feel a little productive. Well, uh, I just picked up a tip that I uh, was not intending to there. Uh, we do a schedule, we've got a 10 year old, he's doing his virtual school right now. And every day we've got you know the schedule, but he crosses things off. And then at the end of the day, we're using precious paper towels to go and wipe that stuff off, using the magnet to just move it and not being crossing the, oh, you just got <laughs> really good one. Seriously, it's a pain to do that, so. That's a good and, point. I was wishing for a whiteboard. I don't have a whiteboard. So. Well, that, yeah. <clears throat> And I did not want to rewrite that schedule every day, <laughs> but That's yeah. Funny. This morning I got up this, and I have a, I have a 10 year old now, newly 10 year old. And this morning I got up and I started, you know, doing my checklist of things. And I said, wait a minute, I'm going to make some pancakes and bacon. And we're going to sit and have pancakes and bacon. So while video conferencing, multitasking, sitting with my partner and my son, having pancakes and bacon in a hurry. And he says, if it weren't for quarantine, we wouldn't do this on a random Wednesday morning. And I'm like, you're absolutely right. So let's enjoy it. Let's have fun. Even though I was like, my mind's a million different places, but his was right. And I was grateful for him just kind of interjecting that. So that was really nice. And then we're back to homeschooling, <laughs> which is not fun. <laughs> not fun at all. anyone else like to share? Jennifer, I see you. So one opportunity I've tried to take with this is to follow your passion, which I've seen a lot of people talking about on different social media. But like um, my background is education. So I'm a certified guidance counselor, not working right now, but um, so I'm very education focused and I found this to be a good opportunity having my two sons at home and they're, I'm very blessed because they're super smart and they make it very easy so I cannot complain at all um, but I've given them little assignments each week to kind of get their 
creative juices flowing and let them follow their passion. So like the first week I had them create um, a pitch for Shark Tank with a, you know, with a project of something like a problem and a, a solution that they came up with. And then I gave them another project about um, like, I'm an alien and you have to explain something to me as though I don't understand anything that you're saying. So step by step by step. So, you know, they've been taking that and kind of running with it. And that's been really cool to see them have that opportunity to really go beyond the curriculum that they're learning and really, you know, think about the stuff that they really want to learn. So that's been my little nugget of gold here with the homeschooling. But like I said, they, they love to read. I can't complain because they're, they're great boys and they're doing really well with the homeschooling. Um, but that's been kind of a cool thing to see that side of them because a lot of times they'll come home and they'll be like, oh yeah, school was fine and we did whatever. And so now I really get to a little more hands-on and really see how their mind works and kind of go from there. So that's been a really, really fun thing to see for them. That's cool. And I, and I, I just got to say, like, for educators who are working through this challenge right now, like, i sure I've had parent-teacher conferences, I've emailed the teachers and all that sort of thing, but to see the way virtual learning works right now, it's, it's, it's almost like Facebook for school. So the teachers are commenting and the kids are having math problems and, you know, making comments on them and their classmates can say, hey, I thought the same thing too. And the teacher's like, well, what about this? And think about that. And that's a whole new realm. I never really thought about, like you just said, like seeing them in their element in a much different way. It's, it's, it's eye-opening, challenging, because I have to do a lot more thinking and reading about what he's doing and how he's doing it. But I'm also just awed by the educators who are still in the trenches doing doing amazing things to keep our kids as regular and as happy as possible. Any any final thoughts? Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for everybody for coming. I just love seeing these beautiful pictures and kind of remembering people and not remembering everybody. And it's, it's so interesting to me that the, the uh, conversation so much has revolved around children and teaching. And that, that's our task for all generations. And I just love the fact that someone said, you know, they could now see how their child mind, child's mind worked. Mm -hmm. Can't see that when they're in school. And that's such a wonderful thing. So I call that a very strong gold shred in, in this draw. The, the, the closer you get to the children, and even parents are separated from them for big parts of the day, obviously, but there's this opportunity to just see how their minds work. It's a wonderful, and even friends, if you're talking on Facebook or something, you see how somebody's mind is working. I think it's a deep knowledge, and it cements bonds of friendship. Thanks so much, everyone. I, I have actually one more question um, for you, sister. Um, there's a question on the chat, and I just want to expand on that a little bit. Um, what are some some tips that you can share with with all of us as we kind of continue to to go through this? Perhaps some nuggets of gold to remember or to keep in mind uh, during the next couple of weeks and months. Well, the medieval Mister Julian of Norwich after she had revelations from God, said, all will be well. All manner of things will be well. And I think we have to say that to ourselves each day. When it's going to turn the curve, I don't know, but God's still in his heaven. And while he certainly allows things like this to happen because we all have free will and we, we do what we please, there's a pattern, there's a design, and this time we need to use to the fullest extent we can to learn more about ourselves, our family, our world, and, and learn more about how God's presence is everywhere, everywhere. The wonderful miracle of creation, when, when the Big Bang occurred, we were all created in incipiency, incipiency at the same time. They're all brothers and sisters. They all came from the great, great surge 
in which human life, life itself and then human life came on this earth. So I, I really think uh, to everything there is a season. And this is the season for reflection, for kindness, for forgiveness if we need that, for what we do spiritually because pretty soon the busy world will, will go on again and we will not have this time again to be a little more thoughtful, a little more inner directed. And let's all take advantage of it. So with that, have a great day, everyone, and enjoy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.